Egyptians voted for the second day Tuesday in the country's first parliamentary election since the ouster of Osni Mubarak. The process is to be staggered over the next six weeks in 27 provinces. When results are finalized in January, the influential Muslim Brotherhood, a moderate Islamist movement banned since the 1950s, is expected to emerge as the largest power but without an outright majority. The historic election will determine whether the group's Freedom and Justice Party is poised to move Egypt toward a more Islamist path after nearly six decades of authoritarian rule. Throughout Monday, massive crowds turned up at polling stations despite security concerns and a deadly spate of violence in the week before the polls opened. Many voters say they're casting ballots for the first time, while others express hope that this election, unlike those of decades past, will count. Many Egyptians say that despite their hopes for a successful election, they are anxious about their country's future. VOA's Elizabeth Arrod has more from Cairo. It's the moment Egypt's protesters have fought for, an election in which the results might be a surprise. But with the violence racked run up to the vote, it's not been easy getting to this point. University student Habiba El Husseini is not hopeful. I honestly don't want to be pessimist. I just want... I want a better future for us, but now I don't think they were the, in, uh, it's the right time for, the, for them to take place, but they have to take place. It's a dilemma discussed in Husseini's political science class at the American University in Cairo. Political sociologist Saeed Sadek asked students about their involvement in the protests. Anybody went to Tahrir? Very good. So two? Only two this time? Habiba Husseini says she plans to visit Tahrir Square to oppose the government crackdown on demonstrators, not to support the protesters' anti-military cause. We're in very unstable times and the economy is, is a disaster, so this is not what they should, they should be focusing on now. They should be focusing on our economy, our tourism, everything else except that. As you see, there was division of labor. Saeed Sadek says the military gives some Egyptians a sense of stability after the tumultuous events of the Arab Spring. The military is basically middle class, urban middle class, and they have many economic interests. But the civil military conflict in Tahrir Square is not the only source of tension. Sadek blames Islamist politicians for inspiring further resentment and unrest. Political Islam is not Islam. These are politicians who are using religion to reach power. And they are building that on class struggle, uh, division between the village and the city, uh, Bedouin life and uh, modern life, uh, and they built on that. These different voices have left some Egyptians even more alienated. Cairo salesman Salah Hassan. We are entering a dark thing, a dark stage, because the majority of the parties have political and personal interests, and they do not express the public opinion, the working class, because, as they say, we represent the silent majority. At the American University in Cairo, Professor Sadiq is challenging his students to understand where they fit in Egypt at this historic crossroads. Are you the majority or the minority? No matter how uncertain these days might be for many Egyptians, Experts say the results of the elections might make that question a little easier to answer. Elizabeth Arrett, VOA News, Cairo.